Chairperson Carney? Present. Vice Chair Cancel? Yeah, um, uh, uh, Commissioner Richards is excused. Um, not here, not present. So, so Commissioner Cancel? No. Here. Um, Commissioner Jones? Here. Commissioner Tarbutt in Springfield? I saw a head shake. Yes, here. Uh, and I think I already did you, Commissioner Brooks. Maybe not. No, but I'm here. Thank you. Well, great. Thanks, everybody, for showing up. And I do see that there are a number of also members of the public here. So I think um, what I'd like to do before we get on to the formal part of the agenda is ask Jack if you wouldn't mind uh, um, facilitating some uh, resident then staff, then public comment. Um, Point of information. I have a question. On the uh, agenda, are, are you saying resident? Because on the agenda it says call to order, roll call. It doesn't say anything about any other residents or any other yeah. one speaking. Is that not true? Are there objects? Are there objections to allowing some resident staff or public comment this evening? It's not an objection. I was just confused because from what I understand, everything must be on the agenda. Is not is that not correct? I mean, I just came from a training. So that was my understanding. Well, that's better safe than sorry. Better safe than sorry. So apologize to any members of the public who are here. We're going to move along because the agenda did not list right. specifically for resident, staff, and public comment, as is our usual process must have been an oversight and so i apologize for any members of the public residents uh who are or staff who are here to give public comment um we do have another meeting coming up in may so i hope you'll come back and offer your public comment to us then and just know that in the meantime you can always send any comments that you have directly to um director leaper and depending on to whom they are addressed then they will be received um, Madam, Madam Chair, um, if I would just let you know that the reason why there's no public comment, staff comment, or tenant comment um, on the agenda is because this is a special meeting, um, and special meetings um, have not had uh, those comments, um, only usually your regular meetings or your annual meetings. Thank you. Thank, thank you. And so there you go, members of the public or staff or residents, that is the reasoning. Okay. One other point of clarification. On the on the notices, it says uh, um, the ED and secretary to the uh, Board of Commissioners. I thought it was the reporting secretary. I was just trying to figure out how to be consistent. Well, yes. Okay. What, let's talk about that later, Commissioner Tarbutton. Sure. Because that's not really an important process right now. And I know that a lot of people are here, including some commissioners who are taking time away from an important conference and things. We can figure out what you know the difference between recording secretary and secretary to the commission uh at another time if that's okay next board next board meeting if we could please no we'll review <clears throat> what what i'll do is i'll review that question that point of information that you made and i will draw up a response that helps you understand whether there is or isn't or you know the difference between recording secretary and secretary to the commission. That's not what I asked, but thank you. I'll draw that up for thank you. you. As I I don't, I don't, it's not about understanding, I'm just asking about the consistency. So. I won't do... Oh, I'm sorry. What is it? What I thought that you asked. Oh, you want to know why we're inconsistent. Why? Is that what you're asking? Your let's go on. Is why are let's we go on. I just asked it to be an agenda item. If you refuse to do that and you're being fair, then we'll just leave it at that. No, 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 no. I don't refuse. I don't refuse. So I'm sorry, um, Madam Chair, was there a roll call? Did, I was having some cute computer issues. Did you call the yes, roll? Yes, everybody. Yes, all are present except Commissioner Richards, who is excused. Thank you. Uh, I'm not sure if, whether Commissioner Tarbutton is satisfied that we can move on on the agenda. I think she just said that um, she said that I did not answer her question 
And I, she wanted to know why it stated in some cases, recording secretary, and in some other cases, secretary to the commission. And no. this was an, an important, oh, then please excuse me if I'm wrong. No, I would like to, I'd like to drop this and go on. I just wanted to bring this up in the next agenda so we could go through this there, because if you're saying people have stuff to do, I'd like to get to that. But I would like to ask about this question before, uh, again, at another time. So I, I, Thank I, you. I, you know, we could bring it up and we could talk about it. Thank you. So Jack, um, now that we're done with that point of information, uh, can you just remind me what the next item is? Because as I said, I do not have the agenda in front of me. I think we're moving directly into the presentation by Gary DePace. Hello all. Um, tonight we have a couple of housekeeping items which is included in a is the budget revision. If you recall the last time when we spoke about our quarterly reports, I said that we will be doing a budget revision before April 30th. Uh, we have to have a revision in 60 days prior to the end of our fiscal year, uh, which is coming up. Um, we have some, uh, I will explain the items of that revision, as well as something that's new. Um, it's quite unique, actually, is that we are also being presented a budget, initial budget for the 400-9 account which is consistent with us taking over Hampshire Regional Housing Authority. Um, the legislation went through uh, effective March 1st that we would be taking those units on as owners. Um, so we were told by Boston to submit a four month budget um, called the 400-9, which adds in budget authority for those units from Hampshire. Um, for the period of March 1st through June 30th, at which time these units would then encompass in a consolidated approach to our fiscal 25 budget um, beginning on July 1. Uh, so it's, it's kind of unique. It's a one-time budget uh, for four months, um, which you'll be taking- You're breaking up, up a little, Gary. Gary, I'm sorry, you are breaking up a little bit. Okay, I'm not sure why. I, I, I have good internet connection, but I'll, I'll, I'll repeat again. Um, so th therefore tonight, you're actually voting on a budget revision of our 400 program and our 689 program. And I'll explain those items of what are in those, as well as that 400-9 uh, budget which is the four month budget uh, of the Hampshire regional units. Um, so the, the major items in this in our budget revision, I know I brought these up the last time, um, but basically were the property insurance expense. Uh, so account 4510 has been increased in the 400 program and in the 689 program. Um, because if you remember last year when we were passing the budget, we weren't sure, but we ended up getting our property insurance with about a 28% increase. Um, so this budget revision adds that expense to those. And then we had um, some major items in extraordinary maintenance that needed to get addressed. Obviously, we addressed them. Um, but we did not have enough money in our operating budget to cover those. So we've moved, we, we need to fund those in our extraordinary maintenance. One was the uh, boiler at Salvo, which was a total cost of $50,361. We also had the bed bug issue at Salvo, which in total was $98,942. And we also have done increased um, flooring, flooring replacement, uh, which has been in many units. Uh, but that for the year has totaled $117,286. So that $266,589, which is currently in our operating budget, uh, in our expense column in contract maintenance, which is if you, when we get to our actual um, 
expenditures, we are over in that budget line item. And that's because of those items. Now, what will happen is once this budget gets approved, we will move those expenses into the extraordinary and bringing, it will bring our operating expenditures back in line. So yes, um, thank you, Jack, for circling that, but that's where we're putting 266,589 basically moving the expenses out of contract costs and into the extraordinary maintenance line item. Um, the other thing that we've done within the budget revision is we brought the actual cost of the replacement of equipment, which was the, the truck we bought. Uh, we originally had budgeted 55,000. The actual cost was 50,700. Uh, so that's there. The other thing we did under equipment purchases non-capitalized, uh, we originally had budgeted appliances at $30,000. We've increased that to $60,000. we have replaced numerous um, stoves and refrigerators over the over this year, and uh, those are that was just so that we could cover the cost for those. Um, Jack, you might want to flip to the next page. I think it's before the, you uh, do that. Just one quick question. Okay. Uh, yeah. I, I, just a very quick, just a very quick question. Just you yeah. make reference to the four hundred program, the four hundred dash nine program, and the six eighty seven. For the people who are listening, especially the residents who are here from the LTOs, it would be helpful if you just say what those programs are in a just say. Sure. In one word, and not sure. The four hundred C program is all our state-owned properties. Thank you. Um, not our federal properties, you understand? And that's, I mean, um, Jack, if you wanna just point out what those are, I know it's Salvo House, it's, I, I... The only ones that are federal are McDonald and Florence Heights. There we go, so, okay. Okay, so that's everything, else, you do, everything right? else falls under the 400 for yes. those people who are confused by that. Yeah. Maybe they're not, maybe it was just, you know, but I'm, I'm just sorry, trying to make uh, sure that- Madam Chair, um, do you have two commissioners with hands raised? I don't know if you can see their screens, and I don't know if those are uh, questions. Yes, for yes, I do. I, I do, and it, and I think I'm going to go ahead and ask Gary if you don't mind before you shift sure. to the next page. Would you please uh, take a question from Commissioner Jones? Sure. Um, my point was just that Commissioner Tar Burton, Burton had her hand up, and I and I think it was there for some time, and I just wanted to be sure that she was called upon. That's I don't have a question. Okay, thank you so much. I don't know why I don't see that hand. Uh, I'm seeing the script. Oh, I see. It's not yellow. I see. Okay. And usually I see the yellow ones just because they stand out. Commissioner Tarbutton, do you want to ask a question for Gary before he turns the page? Uh, well, first, I'd like to thank Commissioner Jones for uh, acknowledging that. And also, I'd like to thank you, Chair, um, because you asked a question just as I was going to ask. I was going to think that... Uh, just so we can keep this, uh, when you say four, uh, 400 uh, dash C or 689, it would be nice. So I don't have to keep going back and looking up my references for it. So it would be really helpful if on all the document, uh, uh, doc documents, future coming, that we could put that little word. Um, we just have that. It's just easier when I'm going through lots of stuff so I can just have not having to look that up again. Thank you, guys. Okay, thank you, Commissioner Tarbutton. Okay, turn to the next page, please, Jack, for Gary. Okay, um, that's just a breakdown. This is the breakdown of our programs, the 200-667-C705. That hasn't changed at all um, since the other. The only thing that's different is this 400-9 program. That is, okay, for everyone should be aware. I mean, you know that those are the units that we're taking over from Hampshire Regional. They are the units in Huntington and Cummington. Um, so that's really, that's just the unit counts from our revisions that is, isn't changing. Uh, the next page, this is the calculation of our subsidy. Now that is something that has changed since the beginning. When we originally did the budget, we thought we were gonna get our RSC grant, mixed population grant at 31,200. Um, we in fact, they were denied the 31,200, but they granted us an additional $60,000 RSC grant. 
So right now we have a total of $120,000 in uh, resident services um, a, a, awarded as a special grant from, from DHCD. To fund our resident service coordinators. Yes, that does. Thank you. Yeah. Yep. Um, so Jack, the next page down. Okay, this one, I know it's sideways, but that just basically is the same pro, uh, listing of all our schedule of employees and positions. Mm -hmm. um, the only thing that has changed from our original budget submission is that we added in the Hampshire accounts. Exactly, Jack, thank you for circling those. And we've added the allocation into the 400-9 account versus the management service contract. And again, that has to do with the four month uh, split of the program going from management services to the 400-9. Okay, And we're also, and we're picking up those positions for the four months of the maintenance men and the staff in the clerical up in Hampshire Regional. Um, but the next page, Jack, unless there's any questions. I had one. Uh, Miss uh, Commissioner Tarbutton has her hand raised, Madam Chair. Yes, yes, I see. Okay, so I, I guess we'll go page by page and ask questions because I think Gary yeah. just offered that. Well, Gary, Since Gary just offered that, I'm going to go ahead and ask if anyone has questions on this page as Gary just presented and I see Commissioner Tarbutton, please. Yes, yeah, you're going a little too fast for me. So I do appreciate that. Uh, we're going, if we're going to go over each page because I didn't know it was going to be at the end of the uh, end of your uh, spiel, but I, I, I had the questions right here. Um, when you asked uh, this information that has all the salaries, uh, you know, executive director, and I just wanted to make sure that that's correct. The salary is what is that? What is the salary altogether with all these properties? I'm going through the lines here. I can't find my page right now, and they're not numbered, so it's very difficult for me to keep pace. Um, okay. So I'd like to know what it is total. So it's a salary basis of the one nine. What is it? Uh, almost two hundred thousand. One nine five eight seven one. Right. The one nine. The months. executive. You're you're asking the executive director. Am I, I am. Correct? Yes, it's the one nine five eight seven one plus the twenty five hundred. Okay, that's, uh, no. and that's that will be in your motion, and that has not changed, uh, Commissioner Tarbutton. That's exactly the same as it was on the original budget. Okay, my question is: as we're going over, why is it split up? Like, if one salary for her is one thing, why is it four hundred dash C? It's this amount, and then the six eighty nine dash C. It's another amount, and then the that's, MR. That's the allocation. Uh, Commissioner, that's that's how much of her salary gets charged to each, other, each program. If oh. it helps, if that uh, if it helps, may I suggest that for Commissioner Tarbutton? So all there are different streams of funding, mm -hmm. and the different streams of funding. For example, I guess the the best example is just, there is some specific funding for the Hampshire Regional. And that will come and so that portion of the salary, not only for the executive director, but also for the assistant director, for the accounting, for various things come from different streams. Those streams are numbered. Am I correct, Gary? Yes. That that's yes. just it's telling you that the you know the screen that shows the total uh salary is the salary rate. The allocation between programs is where we're separating each one of those costs. It doesn't mean that they're getting each getting an additional amount from each one of right. those programs. That's just the allocated cost of where they're, it's being funded from. So if, if, I, if, I if, I, if I may, I think an easy way um, that I've done training with these before is that for example, Commissioner Tarbon, in the amount that says 195871, uh, and if you look to the right of that, it says a column 400C, and it says 51338. So 
of that whole 195871, 51338 comes from the 400C program. So it's telling they you, okay, this figures. column is the, is the grand they, total. And then show her the 400C, Jack, if you could circle the 400C. The 400C is the state is the state programs. Right. So the state properties pay that portion of that grand total. Then you have the elderly properties. Um, then you have the Section 8, uh, which is both housing and voucher programs. They pay a percentage of that whole 195, and that's their numbers. And so it's telling you across the line what each program pays a portion of that total number that you see under the amount. Does that make better sense? It, well, it, it does. I just, uh, it did. I just, sometimes you have the price and then usually you can hit it and it goes into specifics. My question is management of the agreement. Is that including the car that you drive and the gas that's paid for the car? That's about what, 30,000? Is that what that includes? The management no, other no. agreements is the management agreements for the hill for managing the other properties like East Hampton and all of that. So that's the salary for the combined of all the properties that you require that 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 you manage. Correct. Yes. And if we ever get a chance, if we could table this, I'd like the the language takeover management. I'd like to be sort of consistent with that. All right. Thank you for this. Okay. Please go on, Gary. Okay. Um, so anyways, this next page is basically just a backup page, but the, the most important one is the page that uh, Jack was just going to, which is this uh, calculation of operating reserve balance. Um, can you go to that one, Jack? That's the 689. Can you go to the 400C? Oh, next one down, but I think you got to flip it around. Oh, my goodness. Give me a hand. Nope. That one right there. Can you flip that around? There we go. Um, so again, my overall presentation talks about the budgets and we talk about percentage of operating reserve. And I've always said that um, we wanna be never kind of above 70%, but not below 35%. Um, with these major expenses that we had this year to our 400 program, which included those items I just, mentioned the bed bugs, the flooring, the boiler, um, we are taking our reserves down to about 39%. Um, now, that doesn't mean that when we close our books in July, which is only a couple months away, that we're going to be at 39. I'm hoping we're going to be a little higher than that because in there's other items where we're not spending all of our budget authority but that 39% would be the minimum that our, our reserves would be. Now, that's a dramatic decrease in reserves from the last year, which was last year we were at 1,037,000. We're now anticipating that if we spend everything in the budget, we would be at 780,000. Um, that 39% is getting close to the minimum. Um, when we're at minimum, we have to be very careful at what we um, spend and what we what we uh, budget for. So, anyways, that's kind of the just the um, the the point that I wanted to point from this particular uh, form to show you that thirty nine percent. And again, we won't know that until we close our books in June. Uh, we're uh, like I say, I'm anticipating we will be higher than that, but uh, that's what this revision is showing. Gary, so yep. you mentioned you mentioned the difference between the 700,000 and the 1 million yep. three, I think. And so we know that the 700,000 is at 39% reserve. Yep. Can you just tell us what that other number was in terms of percentage? We were, let's see, 1037, 837, divide that by the one, Nine nine oh eight. I could nine. have done that. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Fifty. We were <laughs> so we're going. We're going from fifty two percent down to, to thirty nine. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Um, so, it, but basically, what it, what it shows is that it's a it's a decline in our reserves, right. and yeah. and we we know where that's coming from, and it was coming from those extraordinary items that um, we've done, 
And I'm not saying that those items that were done were not needed. Of course they were needed. Um, but that's where we've got you, to, as board members, you have to understand what, when we have um, constraints just to be careful. And uh, one other one other point then the yep. thirty five percent that we'd like to keep as a minimum yep would like right. to never go we'd like to never go below that but that doesn't mean that if there were some super extraordinary something and we had to go below that and even deeper into our reserves you could I yes mean, yes it would just, okay. it would yes. just require a, it would require a supplemental vote and yes. a request from Boston. Um, yes, but obviously what we're trying to do, and I just want to point out as we're doing a 689 budget revision also, is that exactly what happened in the 689, and again, the 689 you mean the federal. is our- The 689 uh, is the federal. No, 689 is the, uh, cool. Jack, what are the units that- 689 is the, um, is the uh, uh, like Fort Sander, or, um, yes. Cahill, Okay, so other state, other state, uh, um, uh, properties, right? But they are not the larger Salvo right. and uh, Tobin, et cetera. Yeah, right. Bridge, Thank you for that Bridge, Bridge, Grace House, Bridge Street. This, yes. those are two yes. Sorry. Right. Thank you. And before you turn the page, Gary, yeah, uh, Commissioner Tarbutton has another question. Okay. Y yes. Um. Thank again. Thank you for all of this. It's very helpful. It's a little confusing, giving me a bit of a headache, but still, it's really in, it's enthralling. You can do that. It gives me a headache too. <laughs> Does it? Well, my my question is: You said, oh, for equipment, stoves, and things like that. Well, we know at Savo we've had some problems with the stove stoves. So I yep. don't know if you had to pay for the cost to ship them back, get more things. So I didn't. I was really hoping a little bit of a breakdown what that meant because. We had some problems with stoves not working. I, I, there are a variety of reasons why they didn't work. And so I wondered what that was like and how you factor that into it. And also, I know you're really busy, but I'm always curious if we had, say, for example, I don't know, why did it have to be this level? If we'd done some things, preventative stuff, could that have brought that percentage of the maximum down? You know, what if uh, th that's the part that I worry about because it's like, oh, it happened. We had a bed bug problem. Yeah, but if we had done some prevention and proactive measures, what would it have cost us? Because it seems like that's a lot of money that we paid. And hopefully we don't have to go through that again. But I think we learn from our mistakes. And this it could be a point where we can learn, like, do you, you know, look into what if everybody who benefited had, were able to get in to a hotel while everything on one floor got clean? I mean, these are the things that I think about because it seems like it's a lot of money. But when you think about the, you know, the totality of it all, including, and you can't factor that into the emotional cost and the anxiety that came on with that particular thing. So I'd be curious, I know you're really busy. I've seen you talk about deadlines, but I'd be curious to know what that would have been like. Thank you. Yep. Uh, uh, Gary, uh, Gary, is there, yep. if you can't answer that, yep. I'd ask if maybe Director Leeper might be able to answer, or, well, I'll see if I can come up with the actual question I think the question was hypothetically, if those things had had, if there if if there had been a different reality, that would have been foresight, foresight that we would have known about the uh, bed bug invasion, how might we have avoided these additional costs? And so it's a question, um, and I understand that uh, Commissioner Tarbutton would like to address that question now. But we do know that it would be an alternate reality, meaning it's not what is the reality now. Is well, there are, are there either of you? Come on. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. What is I'm, it? I'm sorry, Commissioner Brooks. Did did you? Is it okay if we um just ask if if either of those folks have an answer to that question so that we can move on? If they don't, then we'll just move on. Let me amend that. I'd like to move on with that. I'm just hoping that. Maybe now this could be something for the agenda that we bring up because I'm seeing that. And of course, I'm thinking about that. And, you know, the voices are on. So when people are, are making comments, I, I can hear it. But if we could just think about that, something that we can think about before. I don't want to waste all the time on this now, but that's what come up. And that's in part of my notes. So that's yeah. not that we have to get down nitty gritty today with this. But I'm just saying oh, these are things that you. I'd like to okay. look into. Then let, let's just make sure, um, Director Leeper. Secretary Leeper, can you take a notation 
of uh, Commissioner Tarbutton's worries, as she just described those? Worries? I think that I think you said that's what I'm worried about. No, I didn't. I said. Oh, no. I'm sorry. Could it's you okay. correct the that? The word then? is not an operative word, but let's just please. Well, just I'm I'm trying to help Secretary Leeper jot down so that those can be addressed. Would you want to state it more, uh, better than I could, please? I would. I would like to bring this up, maybe on an agenda item for next um, a month, mm -hmm. or one of the committees that we have that we mm -hmm. could go and brainstorm ways that on a proactive level that we don't have to do the reactive. What would have done, what are some things we can do uh, moving forward that it doesn't have to get to this level? And we can talk about yeah. every option before. Did you get that, Director Leeper? Yes, thank you. Okay. I don't see any other hands, so I think we may be able to go on, Gary. Okay. Um, so Thanks. as we move into the 689 budget revision, I indicated that uh, primarily on the revision, it has to do with our property insurance. Um, our reserves are fine there. The only thing I want to point out is that if you look at our quarterly report of the 689 expenditures, we are way overspent in our 4430 account, which is contract maintenance. Now, what that is, and that's what we have been working with, with Jack and, and Executive Director Leeper, in that... Um, we had a mold remediation problem, uh, which started small, turned out to be very large. Um, if we had to fund that from our operating reserve, our reserves would have gone into a negative, um, not just below minimum, but a negative reserve. So what was what developed from that in the last probably month, Jack, and I know you can bring it up, Jack has been working very hard with Boston. We got a, was it a $70,000 grant for that? So, so we, um, this is this is just so that the board is aware, this is on um, Grace's house, um, which as you know, is a rock foundation. Um, and we had had some issues uh, quite some years ago that were remediated. Um, and uh, the, the commercial vendor was operating several ACs in one unit and right in the unit next door to it, they were up, they were not operating an AC and they were creating some moisture um, that then created some mold issues. And so we were able to, with uh, many conversations with DHCD, we were able to create a fish, uh, create a capital project out of it um, because it's a mold, it was mold, a mold issue. And so it became a capital item rather than just having to pay for all this out of pocket. Um, and so Jack, uh, what was the amount initially that we've, we've put forth through this? So originally we started at 29,000 and now it's up to 76 and the state has agreed to fully fund it. Yeah. Perfect. <laughs> so now rather than come out of our operating expenses, it'll come out of the state will fund it fully right. um, as an as a as a capital expenditure. Right. Which is kind of why I just wanted to point that out in that uh, when you're looking at a quarterly report in the 689, you're going to see that it looks like we're way overspent. Um, but that's where those where the funding will get transferred to this grant funds that we just got approved. And, and I, I want to commend uh, Jack and uh, Commissioner Leeper that, I mean, I'm sorry, and Executive Director Leeper in following up to get this funding, um, because that's what that's what we do. But um, and just one more thing to help those that are listening, especially the LTO folks that are here. I know we use acronyms a lot and it helps us to. Kind of speed it, but I think most folks don't really understand what a fish item is. It might help be helpful if you just say what that acronym means, the F I S H. What that means is that that identifies to the uh, capital improvement plan or grant that comes through our modernization program. Or thank state you. Why is it called plan. fish? Why is it called fish? Uh, you know, I'm not really sure. Um, okay. All right. We'll accept that. All right. I was hoping we could get what the acronym was, but that's okay. We'll look at, we'll get that later. The last I heard, Commissioner, was that the fishes are going away. They're called work plans, not work plans, they're called um, 
oh god i can't even think of it but there it changes all the time but... well if you're confused you can just imagine how folks <laughs> from the public get for you i am i'm just trying to make sure that folks understand and don't don't get overwhelmed by some of this not I, I, to I, not to belabor the issue at all i totally agree okay um so anyways that our reserve level for the 689 program is staying within the parameters that we need to. Um, so the other only other one is the 400-9 program. And again, this budget that you're approving is a four month budget. It's It kind of bridges us into uh, our current, our next year's budget, which will take this these fundings and become part of our 400-C. Um, the reason it became a four month budget, it, believe it or not, is Hampshire Regional has a calendar year uh, budget where we have a fiscal year budget, which ends in June. So the fact the way everything moved was this was the way Boston told us to do it. And so that's what we've done. Um, Reserve level in the Hampshire project um, looks fine. We're again within that 35 to 70% range at 49%. Um, once these once these items get closed in June, uh, as of June 30th, they will kind of combine into one operating reserve into our as we bring these on. But it this is kind of a bridge budget. It's not done all the time. Uh, so it is kind of unique. Um, that's really the budget revision that's in front of you um, with those major items and changes. So I think that just requires um, three votes uh, to approve them. So um, uh, Madam Chair, if you'd like me to read the resolution, it'll go over uh, each before of before you before you read. Oh, yeah, go ahead. Do that. We'll put it on the floor and then we'll open it up for other questions from other commissioners. Please. And then I just wanted to let you know what FISH stands for. It stands for oh. Financial Information System for Housing, which is a DH, which is an HLC acronym, a state acronym. State. Yes. OK. Yeah. OK. Thank you. You're welcome. Resolution 202404, which is approval of the FY24 budget revisions for all programs. Whereas the Northampton Housing Authority wishes to submit budgets as presented by fee accountant Gary DePace and as, and as indicated for each program. The annual operating budget re revision one for the state aided program 401 for fiscal year 2024. The proposed operating budget for state-aided family and elderly housing for the Northampton Housing Authority, chapters 200, 667, and 705 programs, which are program number 401 for fiscal year ending June 30th, 24, showing a revenue of $3,774,798 and a total operating expenditures of $3,981,677,000. Thereby requesting a subsidy of $1,546,718 be submitted to the Department of Housing and Community Development of executive offices of housing and community development for its review and approval. Annual operating budget for revision one state aided program 400-9 initial submission for fiscal year 24, the proposed operating budget for state aided family and elderly housing of the Northampton Housing Authority chapter 667 and 705 for program 400-9 for fiscal year ending June 30th, 2024, showing a total revenue of $95,793 and a total operating expenditures of $88,834,000, thereby requesting a subsidy of $37,709 be submitted to EOHLC <clears throat> for its review and approval. Annual operating budget for state aided program 689 re revision one fiscal year 24, the proposed operating budget for state aided family housing of the Northampton Housing Authority program number 689 for fiscal year ending June 30th, 24, showing a total revenue of 100,190 dollars. $100, for a total and total operating expenditures of 
dollars, thereby requesting a subsidy of zero be submitted to the department uh, for review and approval. Annual operating budget for the state aided MRVP program revision one with no changes for the fiscal year 24 and annual operating budget for federal program uh, FY 24, no changes. Therefore, be it resolved that the Board of Commissioners for the Northampton Housing Authority does hereby approve the 401, 689 REV1, 409, our 400-9 initial submission, MRVP and federal budgets with no changes for FY24 and further that the executive director's total annual salary, salary of 198,371 and further that the authority and the executive director in their name shall be authorized on and after the passing of the resolution to do and perform on behalf of the authority all acts and the things required of the authority to perform all obligations of the budget, including electronic signatures on required forms, and be it resolved that the resolution shall take effect immediately. Back to you, Madam Chair. Thank you for that clarification. And for those that are confused, it's on the screen share as, um, as Director Leeper just read that. And then I'll ask, is there a motion to approve the resolution Motion to approve. Oh, okay, thank you, Commissioner Brooks. Is there a second, please? Second. Okay, moved and seconded, and now we'll open it for discussion among the commissioners. Take your time. I mean, we don't need to rush this. I know that there's a lot to look at. So, um, hi, I have some questions. I would like to know, I see what the executive director's salary is, but I would like to know what it includes, for example, the car, the gas, and other perks that come. Uh, what would that be? I was once a resident director at UMass, but when you put in the education, the free food and electricity, it came up to a different salary than the small salary we got. So I don't get that. And I don't see anywhere in here where it shows where some tenants have gotten some incentives, a certain amount off the rent. I'd like to know all that, how that's broken down. So that's the reason. Before Okay, before we move to those specifics, Okay. I don't think I, I know what you're asking. You do? And those, so I do. I understand what you're asking. You're, on, you're asking what the package is, what the package, meaning not just the car and the gas, but health insurance and pension and all those other things, because some <laughs> other some other facilities and organizations do show a total package. Now, in our usual budget that was passed uh, in which month was that July of last year that we did pass this budget? Mm -hmm. Uh, I don't think that those things, so there is no change to those items. So, so right now, this is salary. What you're looking at in terms of okay, that salary, just salary, not the car, not the gas, not the health insurance pension, not the, um, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. other, those other perks, as you call them. So um, I, I, am I correct? Well, I don't you know. Salary, I, it, the salary is um, not changed in these revisions. Um, and and actually, if Commissioner Tarbutton would like to know the specifics, she should read the contract because I, it's a contract. Can you send me a copy of that, please? Yeah, I've already sent it to you, but I'd be happy to send it again. Please do again. And also, uh, it's I, I don't want to belabor over this because sometimes, uh, 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 Chair, I know you're trying to do the best that you can with this, but you're kind of uh, putting words in my that I didn't say. I didn't say like for worry. I, I said concern. So... I'm a little, um, I, I, but my answer, some of the questions, they won't be answered, but that reflects in my vote. So we can just go on. I mean, I had thoughts beforehand. You were somewhat clarifying. I think, again, uh, Gary DePace, what a wonderful job that you put it here. It's a little easier. The, so, but that, that determines my vote. So thank you. Thank you. Then I'll turn now to Commissioner Cancel. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Um, I'm just wondering about uh, the language, and I noticed how it still says Department of um, Housing uh, Development uh, and so forth. Uh, are we doing that just... Um, um, so this is their form, Commissioner Cancel. Um, yeah. This is uh, when you log into their antiquated oh, okay. uh, website, okay. you know, they may yeah. not... There are some forms that they have updated to say EOHLC and some mm. that they have not. Okay, so that's when great. You, when, you, when you look at the one that looks kind of like this, yeah, they haven't updated this form yet. Um, yeah. But when you look at the one 
there's one that I have to do a budget certification, you know, like it looks like this, mm -hmm. you guys don't see that one, but they updated this one, you know? So I think that, you know, they're slowly updating their forms yeah. um, with the right acronyms. Um, but they just haven't quite gotten to those yet. Okay. Right. That's kind of what I was thinking, but I wasn't sure. So I just want to make sure that um, the language was right so that there was no problems once we submit it. Right. Yeah. Thank I, you. Yes, exactly. We, what I do is um, I submit electronically anyway. And so that's why I read the resolution. And then uh, because we're remote, I call the roll uh, once the chair allows me to. And then because I've done each of those things, um, I then record all the votes electronically and I submit a, um, uh, an extract um, and, um, uh, uh, you know, like the votes. And so it's, it doesn't matter that it's not on the proper EOHLC, that they haven't updated it yet. Okay, that sounds good. Thank you. You're welcome. L little by little, they are changing everything and they are getting all changed, but yeah. it's, it's just a matter of timing. Yep. Thank you for that clarification. Back to Commissioner Tarbutton, please. Yes, uh, I know, uh, I think when we went to that conference uh, that was at uh, UMass, they, the news came out that they had pushed in the funding and the funding was for the RSC. We have one RSC here in, in Savo that is like in three places. And, you know, right now we have some property manager here, there and all that. Were these for new people or was it just for those people in those positions to keep those positions? Because I would think we need more. So I, um, I got grant fund i applied for grants for us to have more we actually have a total of three resident services coordinators we have one person that oversees um uh, the the lower level um resident services coordinator and she does uh the elderly sites so she's two days a week for salvo because you have 200 units um, and then she spends, you know, half to a full day at some of the other properties. And then you have the family properties and then the hill towns. So that money covers <clears throat> three resident services coordinators. How many people is that per resident services counseling? Wow. Coordinator. On average. Well, it's um, I, 200. I okay, well, I can do it. Tomorrow. That's a lot. Okay, thank you. Yeah, it would be it would be nice to have, you know, 10, you know, a resident service coordinator for every 10. But every single time there's an, a, a, a NOFA that comes out, I apply for it so that we get more funding, because I think that the more resident services coordinators we have and the more services we can provide, the better. So, uh, so far, we have uh, when I started, we were getting thirty thousand dollars and uh, now we're getting one hundred and twenty thousand dollars. So. Um, I am on top of that. I think that's important. Thank you, uh, Commissioner Tarbutton and uh, Secretary Leeper. My pleasure. Okay, and um, just to, uh, I'm giving folks a little time. They may have some other concerns or questions. Commissioner Brooks, anything from you? No, I'm fine. How about you, Commissioner Jones? Any concerns or questions regarding the presentation and the no I just just thank you to Gary for going through this and I think it's it basically breaks down to the items that were outlined on the um cover letter um that was sent out to everybody with the agenda with the the outstanding things that happened that happened that were were not foreseen and incorporating them into the existing budget along with the 400-9 plan for four months and so the numbers change and the board's being asked to acknowledge that that the numbers change it's it's we're not voting on the entirety of the budget that was already done in past meeting so this is just a modification it's an amendment um and those things definitely happened so i don't think it's it's um that far of a reach and and i'm in support of the amendment or the modification, and that's all I have. Thank you, Commissioner Jones. And that was really helpful to put that in that nutshell. Uh, Commissioner Cancel, any other questions or concerns before I ask the secretary? No, oh, thanks again for the report, um, Mr. DePace, and um, yeah, this looks good. 
And how about you, Commissioner Tarbutton? Any further questions or concerns? The only question I had, and I don't know how they factored this, is about the laundry. Is it our own? Do we pay uh, for the laundry services here? Um, and was that a, a, because you took it, uh, you took the coin collection out of Sabo? And for a while, I, I assume it's still going on. And how did that factor into it? But I'm not quite sure who owns those laundry machines and the money is and all that stuff. Never was quite. Uh, so we own, yeah. we own the machines. And because, machine. we, we, because we own the machines, we get to keep a portion of the money, um, which goes into one of the accounts. Um, because we're required then to pay for, since we own them, we have to upkeep them when they break. We have to repair them when they break we have to replace them etc um and so um we um i believe what's the date today 22nd i i think tomorrow is the day that it ends or it ended on the 21st i'm not sure uh but if, if it didn't end already it's ending in the next day or so for the free laundry from the bed bug um treatments um, and it'll go back to um, coin operation again. Did you put the line item of the agenda that, that it's on? I didn't catch that or maybe you said it and I did. That's not one of the revisions, I don't think. That would be in the original budget, am I yeah, correct? It's in the, it's it's in the it, original it is, budget? It is in the budget. It is in the budget and it's not been, it's not something that's revised. Correct? No, I just wanted to know the number of it, but thank you. You can if you if you just shoot me an email and um if you just shoot me an email, Commissioner Tarbutton, I'm happy to just so that I remember, I'm happy to uh send you an email and tell you what line number line item that falls under. Okay, I, I don't see any further questions or concerns, surprisingly. Then I'll go ahead and ask the secretary to call the roll. Yes, um, resolution 2024-04, approval of budget revisions for programs 401, initial submission of 400-09, 689, and MRVP. Chairperson Carney. Yes. Thank you. Commissioner Jones. Yes. Thank you. Commissioner Tarbutton-Springfield. No. Thank you. Commissioner Cancel. Yes. Thank you. Commissioner Brooks. Yes. Thank you. Uh, Madam Chair, uh, with one absent, four yeas and one nay. That motion carries. And as I understand that, because I heard, uh, Gary, I heard you say that three votes, but we've actually absorbed those three in this one motion, in this one resolution. Yes, yes, that's yeah, correct. I just wanted to make sure because I heard you say this would be three votes. Well, it's those, it's those three items within that. Yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. So, so thank you, everyone. That seems that that budget revisions have carried. That will move forward, and we have one other item agenda, item on the agenda, and that would be to accept the quarterly financials. So I'll move that now then to. Um, is there further financial uh, quarterly financials, Gary, for you to uh, discuss? Yes, I mean if the quarterlies. Uh, I think I indicated within our budget revision that the one of the reasons we're doing this budget revision is because there's a few line items that are um, need to be addressed. And if you look at the consolidated report here, you'll see under the forty four thirty account that. Mm -hmm. Through nine months, we've already spent 109.67% of our budget. Well, that includes the items that we have to move out of there um, and into the 40, the extraordinary maintenance line item. So um, within the, the budget, that's the, per that's the purpose of the revision. When we start looking at these items and saying we're, we're spending uh, too much, uh, that's the reason why we're doing that. Um, so next month, this consolidated report will look different because we will incorporate the new budget number, new budget numbers uh, that you just approved, and we'll go forward into the last three months of the fiscal year um, with that those budgets. Um, Thank you. Okay. Thank you. I'm going to ask then: Is there a motion? Hmm from the floor to accept the quarterly financials as described in the initial presentation and then clarified just now 
by Gary DePace. Is there a motion to approve? Motion to approve. Okay, thank you, Commissioner Brooks. Is there a second, please? Second. Moved and seconded to accept the quarterly financials as presented and now open for discussion. Um, I have one question, please. On yes, line, please. Line item number 4238, I think it says 10 tenant organization costs at 2,886. Uh, so that's yep. at the uh, non-federal properties right there. So that would be, and then the uh, what is it, one and two, what is that, mass 26, one and two, at uh, almost the same amount of money. Jack, thank yep. you for this. This is really good, actually. Thank you for doing this. Uh, so those are the price for a total of 5611. So my question is, was it one tenant organization? Was it two buildings? When you put uh, 400-C, uh, I assume that would be uh, non-federal. So that could be Salvo. And from my understanding, there's two LTOs. Uh, but there's also some tenant associations. So I that's not as clear to me as possible. And I don't really know how I can see that with the Mass 26, 1 and 2. If you could clarify that, I'd appreciate it. So where you're looking at the top of um, the top is um, the 26, one and two is um, the federal that's mm -hmm. Florence Heights and McDonald. We actually have um, more than two recognized tenant associations or LTOs. Um, and um, but some of them have officers that have either passed away or um, are no longer um, no longer. Um, Excuse me, just a moment, please. The sound go out or something? What's going on? No, I'm sorry. My um my dog was barking. Um so um you have you have a recognized Tenants Association that has not got all the officers on it at McDonald House. You have a recognized Tenants Association at Tobin Manor. You have a recognized uh, Tenants Association at Hampshire Heights. Um, you have a recognized Tenants Association at um, Salvo. Um, and so uh, those were associations that were recognized and originally formed. Um, there are several residents that are trying to get officers back in place so that they can be uh, meeting again. Um, uh, but uh, but that's why you'll see a discrepancy. Maybe they're not, um, you know, maybe they don't have enough officers to function right now, but there is a recognized LTO. I think you meant to say all those times that you said association, you really meant organization O instead of A. Well, I, I, yes. So meaning LTO, Tobin, meaning meaning Tobin, meaning McDonald, yeah. meaning yeah. LTO and and uh, you know tenants association is one and the same. Um, and I I understand uh, you know for state properties the law indicates that it's an LTO. Um, federal properties calls it a tenants association. Uh, to me, it's one and the same. We fund them the same. It's the same regulations, and you know, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a body of people that are residents um, that we work in conjunction with to help the residents. Um, so to me, it's one and the same. Well, um, I, I, that's a. I don't want to belabor on this, but I, you know, I just went to a convention with them, and that was, and they had some places only had federal properties, and they were calling LTO. So again, that's on the part about the language, and that's not what I understand. And I don't know the bylaws of these various organizations, associations to say what do you happen when you don't have, uh, you know, you don't have your leadership or officers. So it's very confusing to me. I just don't understand it here. I understand expenses and that's great because, uh, you know, for here is there, I don't see an office or a phone or anything for the LTO. And I think there's a very big difference between an LTO and a tenants association. And so, but that's, uh, that factors into my voting on this stuff too. So thank you. Okay, thank you um, for that clarification, uh, Director Leeper, and also for those questions, Commissioner Tarbutton. I'll ask if um, 
If there aren't any further questions or concerns about the quarterly budget that we're motion on the floor is to accept the quarterly financials as presented. I'll ask then the secretary to please call the roll. Yes, uh, resolution 2024-05 to accept the third quarter, uh, quarter uh, financials as presented by Gary DuPace. Com uh, Chairperson Carney. Yes. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Cancel. Yes. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Jones. Yes. Thank you. Commissioner Tarbutton Springfield. No. Thank you. Commissioner Brooks. Yes. Thank you. And Richards is absent. Madam Chair, four yeas and one nay. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. That motion carries. So tonight we have uh, uh, passed then the um, revised budget and we've accepted the quarterly financials. There is no other business on the agenda this evening, but I do want to ask commissioners who have received a communication from me, which was forwarded by our friends over at Good Collaborations, and they asked for a couple of possible dates for a follow-up uh, workshop. And so I'd ask you please to respond to that directly to um, Director Leeper indicating your availability on the two dates that were um, stated in that communication. And if you didn't get that for some reason, also please tell Director Leeper, um, and, and you should get it. I sent it blind CC to all of the commissioners to avoid any open meeting law uh, issues. Okay, so I guess that leaves us with one final motion. If someone would like to offer, oh, I'm sorry, yeah. Thank you, um, Madam Chair. Um, is there a date when they should get back to me by um, with these? Either, date is fine. either date is fine with me. Okay, so the other the other folks who are here, meaning Commissioner Brooks, Commissioner Jones, Commissioner Cancel, could you just let Director Leeper know as soon as you can, maybe today or tomorrow? Either, either date is fine with me. Same, same, either way. Just you, Jeff. <laughs> when you have, have a chance, look, you're I have to look at it tomorrow. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll just, I have just a meeting. The only one who's get a real I have a meeting job. in two minutes. <clears throat> yeah, no problem. Okay. No, no yeah, problem. we don't need it tonight, but you know, we'll just I'll make sure right. that we get that to you. Okay. Okay. Then I'll I'll ask now again for that final motion. Move to adjourn. Is there a second? Second. Moved and seconded to adjourn. All in favor, say aye. We don't need a roll call aye. on that, I don't think. Aye, 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 aye. Thank you all so much.